course in a university must focus on individual delicts, individual violations, torture, and they are sustained by counterforces. It is essential in a democratic society to have counterforces. You must have vigilantes, you must have anti-democratic forces, you must have things to be against so that you are sustaining a democratic dialogue within the society rather than, uh, as we might say, alternative modes of spreading democracy. Uh, so that the counter forces are terribly important. When they don't exist, you don't have democratic policing. And I would suggest, for example, that the RUC, by this definition, probably is not a democratic police force. They used torture, they used it with impunity, they were in conspiracy with various segments of the people they opposed. Uh, they were engaged in terrorism and counterterrorism. And anyone who's been to Belfast during those days knows how, just how frightening that environment was. That's not democratic policing, full stop. Now Clifford's not here. But, uh, that's so what we have is his underlying assumptions uh, also about territorial basis and obligation, which are beginning increasingly meaningless. So if we take the Weberian idea that you have the enforcer stand ready to enforce the state law within a territory legitimately, it's no longer valid. We have American troops in something like 10 countries. We have American agents, DEA, FBI, CIA, in virtually every country in this world, and every country that's defined as narco-terrorism, some cluster of 10 to, 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 to 150, all over uh, the, United, the, country, the world, excluding the transnational policing and other modes that, that Otwin will, will be better prepared to, to speak to than I am. But this puts the lie to the idea that there is a territorial, in this sense, the territoriality is the central key to defining policing. And unfortunately, I believe it's not. And in that sense, I think that uh, uh, Clifford is probably uh, playing a very important role in stimulating us. I, I would like to uh, mention also in this regard that the work of John Rawls and other people in the theory of justice is absolutely essential to the study of the police. It is, uh, if I may be indulged at this point, there is very little justice or concern with justice in criminal justice. And it's used as a throwaway line like community policing. But let's take a couple of basic points. One, that one should be in the original position. That one should see the, the transactions with others as virtually those of unencumbered individuals. And secondly, that you don't do something which further incapacitates the weakest and least tolerated people in the society. That has been the case in, 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 in the past. I do not believe that as the inequalities grow in this country, that that can be sustained. And the question of justice has to be raised. I would, um, now just to move on to a little bit of research, and I do, I am aware of the time issue here, that Mastrovsky and colleagues have done some absolutely, and Albert and Dunham have done some absolutely stimulating, fascinating work that suggests, and I will, I can, it's in the paper, and I, I, I wouldn't embarrass Steve by going on in detail about this, but what they've done is show how the interactive patterns of citizens and police have a sequential quality. They are based upon the nature and kind of violence on each side in its order, that it has organizational effects, that it is patterned by a series of a list of uh, attitudes that we might expect, uh, that violence is differentially directed to the young, sometimes less, sometimes more. And we've known that for 30 years, but particularly with blacks, fascinating anomalies, where it's suggested perhaps that the community policing does, in fact, have an impact on uh, the kinds of interaction proactively that are done with, uh, and that the main technology of the police, of course, is words. Now, and the better your <laughs> words, as, we, as a four-year-old might say, the better my words, the better it works for me. You know, I mean, this is, uh, Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and necessary to look at. Now, I think I won't. Um, uh, I think I would like to say something about uh, the about the tensions of theorizing, and then just briefly something about police studies. Um, one of the difficulties is that when we start to talk about theorizing, we are immediately and, and have three three principal problems. First of all, all the key concepts of social science are sponge concepts. 
They're ill-defined, they're used as if, and they soak up the union as, as need be. Organized crime, roles, status, stratification, class, police. Any key concept is a sponge concept. It's not consensually defined so that you don't, therefore, have systematic propositions that are cumulative about what's found. For example, if you, if that, even, if you, even if you are a radical nominalist, how in the world could you take from 50, what, how many, 40 dimensions that she listed there on community? How could you possibly conceive of that unless you used a factor analysis? In which case, you're not talking about the organizations, you're talking about an abstracted, spurious collection of Features, not organizations. Whether this changes community policing in X or Y, we have no idea. This is not located anywhere. It's located in the abstraction. So the, when you have a, a, the, the second problem with it, the third problem with it is not only conceptual but, but analytic, but thirdly, because the theoretical questions are constantly being uh, uh, primitively assaulted by the immediate demands of funding practical people, uh, and so on, the, the, there's no continuity in the, in the talk about the question. So that you have, it, because you have a, a question like, what is community policing or is it working, you're at such a low level of abstraction without, without any precise analytic definition that it, when, the, when the trend changes, the research dies. If you see it only in, that, in those domains. Of course, there may be other ways to, to, to define it, of course. But if it's not defined theoretically, but in policy terms, then it, it has no cumulative effect. Now, one of the problems there is that you have people like George Kelling saying that he is not a social scientist, but he's a policy, a policy maker. Well, the tradition of social science is that the data have something to do with the policy one advocates, but that seems to be a decision that, that he's made about how he'll play these matters. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, um, and I thank you for your toleration here, a little bit about the future of, the, of, 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 of police studies. First of all, um, as I said in, in communications with uh, Otwin and, uh, and with uh, Morris and Gary, um, I felt that the idea and problems of globalization would be impossible for me to take up partly because globalization is another sponge word that has no precise meaning. It would make no sense to say globalization is happening here and there and everywhere when you're locating it and reifying it without, uh, without an understanding of precisely what you're going for, in addition to the fact that we have virtually no studies of this as a theme that are being shared. Uh, the second thing is that I, did, I, I felt that the problem of, in many respects, of of, uh, of the impact of 9-11 and other kind of shorthands here are very, very difficult to attain, to assess. When someone asked Mao whether the French Revolution was successful, Mao said, it is too early to tell. <laughs> so there is no question in my mind that we have no understanding, whatever. As Kierkegaard said, Life is lived forward, but understood backward. And clearly the case is here. We don't know what these implications were. I was in a meeting within a, a few weeks after that, and people were marking it as an accidental event. After 9-11, this. And I thought they were talking about 9-11 phone calls. And they called it the short end <laughs> from 9-11, 9-1-1. And I thought, gee, nothing's wrong with 9-1-1. It's still, you can get calls. People will come. So the response is still there. But the point is that they were already marking it as a fundamental baseline against which we judge things. Now, I don't, I don't believe in that, and certainly don't believe in that in the immediate uh, context of, of, of our understanding of such matters. And certainly intellectuals are far more likely to be affected by ideas and labels and names than the average person. And I thank the Lord for the average person. 